It's Friday. I'm Matthew Laria, and you're watching the Faith for Live broadcast. Let's pray and release faith over today's broadcast, and then we're going to get right into the Word. Father, we do thank you again today, Lord, for your Word. Lord, we love your Word, and we ask you again today for revelation of it. We ask you for grace and help to receive it, to put it into practice and to see it work in our lives. And Father, I release my faith again today over everybody watching the broadcast. I thank you, Lord, that you are ministering to them today through this broadcast in a great and in a mighty way. In Jesus' name, amen. Now, all this week on the broadcast, we've been doing a series of teachings entitled, Have Faith in God. And in this series, we've been learning about the importance of trusting God at all times, for all things, with all things, and no matter what comes. Now, I want to go back over to Mark 11 and look at verse 22 again. In Mark 11, 22, Jesus said this, have faith in God. Now, if you look up that word faith, you run into the words trust and confidence. And so in that verse, Jesus is telling us, have faith in God, trust God, have confidence in God. He said it again in John 14, 1, don't let your heart be troubled. You believe in God. Again, same idea, trust God, have faith in God. Um, Proverbs 3, 5 says, trust in the Lord with all of your heart. Isaiah 26, 4 says, trust ye in the Lord forever. And so we got verse after verse telling us to trust God. Now, trust God to do what? We are trusting God to take care of us, to take care of our lives, to take care of everything in our lives. And we found out on yesterday's broadcast that when we do trust God, this gives God access into our lives to be gracious to us, to help us, to provide for us, to protect us, to lead us when we trust Him. Our trust gives Him access. Now I want to go over to Matthew chapter 6 um, on today's broadcast. Matthew chapter 6, and one of the biggest enemies of us trusting God is worry. Worry is the greatest enemy to our trust. And so on today's broadcast, I want to talk to you about how to not worry and how to trust God instead. Sounds like a good broadcast, doesn't it? <laughs> and so let's read some verses in, in Mark, Matthew chapter 6, verse 25. Jesus said this, therefore, I say unto you, Take no thought for your life. Now, again, that phrase, take no thought, means don't worry. Don't worry about your life. What you shall eat, what you shall drink, nor yet for your body, what you shall put on. Is not the life more than the meat and the body more than the raiment? Verse 27, behold the fowls of the air, for they sow not, neither do they reap, nor gather into barns, yet your heavenly Father feeds them. Are you not much better than they? Verse 27, which of you by taking thought can add one cubit to his stature? What's Jesus saying? Worrying will not add anything good to your life. And verse 20, he said, why do you take thought or why do you worry about raiment or clothes? Consider the lilies of the field, how they grow. They toil not, neither do they spin. And yet I say unto you that Solomon in all of his glory was not arrayed like one of these. Therefore, if God so clothes the grass of the field, which today is and tomorrow is cast into the oven, shall he not much more clothe you, O ye of little faith? Now I want you to see this. Jesus called these who were worrying, he said they had little faith. If you look up the word um, little faith in that scripture, it means lacking confidence or trusting too little. And so friend, when you are worrying, you are not trusting. I want to say it to you again. When you are worrying, when you are yielding to worry, 
You are not trusting. You know, Keith Moore, um, he's a pastor. He has a church in Branson, Missouri and Sarasota, Florida. Um, he's been in ministry for, I think, close to 40 years now. He's been someone that's deposited um, greatly into my life and Amber's life. And, and um, uh, his, his ministry has had a big impact on us. He was telling a story one time where he was getting ready to go preach at a church. And so I think, you know, early in the week, he started sitting down to prepare for that service and, and what he was going to minister in that service and what the Lord wanted him to do in that service. And I think he prepared for, you know, a few hours one day and, and didn't really hear much from the Lord. And then, you know, prepared again for a few hours another day and didn't really get much from the Lord for that service. And uh, then did it another day and didn't really have much for the service. And then, you know, the next day he's, he's getting on the plane. And so he'll have some time to study on the plane, um, you know, for the service. And, you know, as the service is getting closer, you know, he's starting to get worried and, you know, anxious about well, what am I going to do in the service? I, I don't have anything. And he said, I was, he was kind of saying that to the Lord, you know, I, I need something for the service, Lord. I don't, I don't have anything for the service. And the Lord said this to him. He said, Keith, haven't you learned to trust me by now? Keith, haven't you learned to trust me by now? See, because he was worrying, it made it evident that he was not trusting. And so the end of the story is he rolled the care of it over onto the Lord and, and got, tried to study on the plane didn't get anything. I, I believe he got to his hotel room, if I'm telling right, and started to study some more and still didn't have it. Um, went to the service, I think that night, still didn't have it, <laughs> but he was trusting the Lord that when I get up there, you'll show me what to do. And sure enough, he got up to the platform and the Lord gave him exactly what to do. And it was a great service. Now, why was it a great service? Why did the Lord give him what to do? Because he refused to worry and chose to trust. And so, again, I want you to understand, when you're worrying, you're not trusting. Worry is the opposite of trust. To trust, uh, trust is confidence. Trusting is a resting of the mind. You're confident and your mind is at rest. When you're worried, you're not confident, you're, you're not confident but you're unsure. And when you're worried, your mind is not at rest you're frantic. There's restlessness. Worrying is the opposite of trusting. And you can see this in John 14, 1, when Jesus said, don't let your heart be troubled. Troubled means anxious and distressed, but you believe in God. And so instead of worrying, Jesus is saying, trust. These two are opposites of one another. And so if I am trusting, I'm not worrying. And if I am worrying, then I am not trusting. In Daniel chapter 3, uh, verse 16, this is the story of the three Hebrews who were getting ready to be thrown in the fiery furnace because they wouldn't bow down to Nebuchadnezzar's idol. Well, in the middle of that story, they said this to King Nebuchadnezzar. They said, we are not careful to answer you in this matter or about bowing down and worshiping your God. We're not careful about it. The word careful points us to the idea of anxious or worried. And so they weren't worried. They weren't anxious. And then in verse 28, Nebuchadnezzar said that God delivered his servants that trusted in him. And see, friend, when you are trusting, you are confident that God's going to take care of you. And so you're not worried. I want to say it to you again, when you're trusting... You're confident that God's going to take care of you, and so you're not worried. And for the three Hebrews, they were confident that God was going to take care of them. They were trusting, and that's why they weren't worried. That's why they weren't worried about the fiery furnace. They weren't worried about uh, answering the king. They weren't worried because they were trusting. They were confident that God was going to take care of them. Um, Bill Winston told a story one time. He was in a, in a tennis shop, I guess at a tennis club, and there was tennis on the television, and, and he mentioned, Bill Winston mentioned to the tennis pro um, how, comf oh, I'm sorry, how peaceful 
Roger Federer looked when he was playing tennis. Now, Roger Federer is one of the greatest tennis players of all time. And he was on the TV, and, and, and Bill Winston said to the tennis pro, he said, you know, that Federer looks so peaceful when he plays tennis. And he said the tennis pro started chuckling, and he goes, that's because he knows he's going to win. <laughs> and see, friend, when you're confident that God's going to take care of you, and, and you're trusting him, one of the things that shows up is you start to have some peace about you. And when there's peace about you, there's an absence of worry. Roger Federer wasn't worried and didn't look worried because he was confident he was going to win. And when you're trusting in the Lord and you're confident that he's going to take care of you, there will be an absence of worry in your life. You'll have opportunities to worry, but you won't yield to the worry. And so you can see that saying you're trusting God and actually trusting Him are two different things. Saying you're trusting God or saying that you do trust Him doesn't mean you do. If you are worried and stressed out and depressed and fearful, all of those are signs that you're not trusting the Lord. Because if you were trusting the Lord, you wouldn't be that way. You would be confident, you would be at rest, and you would be at peace. Psalm 511 says this, Let all of those that put their trust in the Lord rejoice. And so those that are trusting the Lord, they're not depressed, they're rejoicing. In uh, Romans 15, 13, it says, The God of hope fill you with all joy and peace in believing. And so if you really are believing, and you really are trusting, and you really are confident that God's going to take care of you, then you are not frantic. You are not stressed. You are not worried. You are not upset. You are at peace. You are rejoicing. Why? Because you're confident that God is going to take care of it. And friend, when you're trusting, it will be this way in your life. Now, um, both to worry and to trust are choices. I want to look at a verse in Psalm 56 and verse 3. Psalm 56 and verse 3. Both to worry and to trust are choices. And so it's foolish to pretend like you can't help but to worry. Whether or not you worry or trust is a choice. And it's foolish to act like you can't help it, whether or not you worry or trust. In Psalm 56, verse 3, the psalmist said this, What time I am afraid, I will trust in you. I will trust in you. You see how that's a choice. And what time I'm afraid, he could have chose to just keep being afraid and not trusting. But he chose to trust. He chose to trust when he could have chose to worry. What time I'm afraid, I will trust. In God, verse 4, I will praise His word. In God, I have put my trust. I will not fear what flesh can do to me. I will not fear. That's a decision. It's His choice. He goes on to say in verse 11, In God have I put my trust. I will not be afraid. And so, friend, you can see to trust is a choice. Now, here's the good news God commanded you to trust Him. And anytime God commands you to do something, He also, with the command, authorizes you and empowers you to do it. And so if God has commanded you to trust Him, then you have been empowered by God to trust God no matter what comes, no matter what you're facing, no matter if all hell is breaking loose, you can trust God in your life no matter what comes. How do I know that? I know that because God told you to do it. And if he told you to do it, he empowers you to do it. And if he empowers you to do it, he authorized you to do it. And so, yes, you can trust God. I think you need to say this with me, friends. Say this, I can trust God no matter what comes in my life. And I never have to worry. Say it with me again. I can trust God no matter what comes. And I never have to worry. Friend, that's your choice. And that is a choice that you 
will have to make. And so when God um, commanded us to have faith in him and to trust him, I'll try is not an acceptable response. When God gives you an order, you don't look back at him and go, yes, Lord, I'll try. No, that's not good enough. When he gives you an order, when he says, have faith in God, trust me. The only appropriate response is this. I will trust you, Lord. Yes, sir. I will trust. That is our response. See, friend, you have to determine in your heart, particularly when you're under pressure, I will trust. I will trust God. I will have faith in him. I will not worry. Now, here's the thing you need to understand. You, me, and everybody else will have opportunities to worry. Thoughts of worry will come to you. Feelings of worry will come to you. That We are all in the same boat where that is concerned. There is none of us that are exempt from experiencing thoughts and feelings of worry. We will all have the opportunity to worry. But where people start to get separated is after the opportunity comes. Because just because worry comes to you, and just because you have an opportunity to worry, and just because you feel worried, and just because you have a worried thought, doesn't mean you have to yield to the worry. You can resist the worry. You can refuse to worry and choose to trust God instead. You can be trusting God with feelings of worry all over you and thoughts of worry attacking you. Just because you have a thought of worry and a feeling of worry doesn't mean you're worried yet. If you yield to those thoughts and feelings, now you're worried. But if you have a thought of a worried thought, or you start to feel real worried about something, and you say, no, sir, in the name of Jesus, I refuse to worry. I will trust God. I will have faith in him, and I trust him to take care of me and take care of that situation. Well, you're trusting the Lord. You're trusting him. And so just because you have a feeling of, of worry or a thought of worry doesn't mean you're worried yet. That's just an opportunity. Now, when the opportunity comes, you have to refuse to worry and choose to trust the Lord instead. That's what the psalmist was doing in Psalm 56, 3. He said, what time I'm afraid, I will trust. And so what was he saying? He's saying, worried thoughts and feelings are coming to me. But instead of yielding to that, I am gonna trust God instead. And so friend, this is how you and I trust the Lord when worry attacks how do we do it? We just say, no, I refuse to worry. I will trust the Lord. I choose to trust the Lord. How do we do it when we're, we resist the worry and choose to trust? Why? Because if you're endeavoring to trust God in your life, you will be attacked by worry. And so many people quit trusting the moment that worry shows up. And friend, you and I got to be better than that. When I'm trusting and worry shows up, what do I do? Resist that worry and choose to trust. Now, when you choose to trust like that, what are you doing? We found out on yesterday's broadcast, you are opening the door and giving God access into your life. On the opposite end, when you choose to worry, friend, you are putting your own well-being in jeopardy. You're shutting God out. You're cutting yourself off from the benefits that come to those who trust. Jesus said you can't add anything good to your life by worrying. And when you do worry, you make yourself vulnerable to the enemy. When you choose to worry, you put your own well-being in jeopardy. When you choose to worry, you put your own prosperity in jeopardy. You see, that's what worry is. It's the enemy of your prosperity and well-being because when you yield to it, you shut God out and you actually open the door to the enemy in your life. And that is why you and me are never gonna yield to worry. That is why you and me, when worried thoughts come to us, when worried, worried feelings come to us, we are gonna refuse to worry and we are gonna choose to trust God instead. That is a choice that we get to make. The devil can't make that choice for you. God won't make that choice for you. You can choose to trust God. 
You can choose to put your faith in Him with feelings and thoughts of worry coming all over you. And friend, if you do that, you better get ready for some good things coming around on the back end of that because you're giving God access into your life to be gracious to you and to help you praise the Lord. Let's pray. Father, Lord, we do thank you today for all the good things that you revealed to us this week on the broadcast. And Lord, we make a decision right now that we will not yield to worry. We will trust you instead. We will trust you to take care of us no matter what's going on in our lives. And when worry attacks us, when we, we are experiencing worried feelings and worried thoughts, we will not yield. With worry all over us, at what time we are afraid, we will trust you. We will put our trust in you to take care of us. And Father, we thank you for help to do it in Jesus' name, amen. Friend, thank you so much for watching this week's broadcast. I believe that the Lord ministered some great and mighty things into your heart and into your life. And so make sure that you take what you learned on the broadcast this week and be a doer of it because that's the only way it'll work in your life. And I wanna remind you again, if you missed any of the broadcasts this week, you can go back to our Roku channel, mam.tv, our Facebook page, our YouTube channel, and you can get caught up with us right there. I believe that as you go back and feed on these things, they're gonna get bigger on the inside of you. Your trust in God is gonna grow. And when your trust in God grows, He is gonna have more access to be more gracious to you. Praise the Lord. Now, hey, don't forget to come back Monday for the next edition of our Faith for Life broadcast. We'll see you then.